G'day guys. Check this out. This is the Power Paul Cup Scout. We are going to do a couple of tests on this little puppy and it is a very small and compact battery from Power Paul Australia. It's been a bit of a delay to get this video out to you guys. I've been absolutely flat out. So hopefully we can put this through some paces and see what she can do. Stick around. What we're gonna do first is we'll take it apart. Let's have a look at this puppy. Take the lid off and check it out and then we'll do the rundowns, yeah? All right, let's get into it. And check this out. Beautiful. So we've got protection caps on the underside of those terminals there. And the monitor for the Dali there. Some of this super flexible cable that's used, really high end stuff. Everything's all glued in well and torqued down. Really good quality, you know, little cheeky battery build here. Yeah, it's all serial numbered and recorded too. You know, Paul does his rundowns and his full discharge tests. Let's flip this over. keep you together we could probably take the balancer off it's not gonna matter you know what I'm gonna do that ah, balancer unplugged that way we can lift it out of here a bit easily a bit more easily you have to excuse my grunting and groaning I hurt my back <laughs> cool all right we're out we'll slip you off Not to have on these cells shot out in the case of that BMS there. All right, happy days. There's the case. All right. Paul also builds that little little step in at the bottom there to secure the cells so they don't wobble around. Like you grab some batteries and grab them, they'll you'll feel all the cells moving around. But let's put the box away. We're not interested in the box. We want to know what's going on in here. So yeah, as you can see, I'm probably not going to flip this up, be too hard while the BMS is attached. But here we go, so... Yeah, these are all tested. 43, 0.43 mega ohms, 3.18 volts. And everything's talked down the spec. Look, good quality bus bars that run, run across it. Pretty, pretty high end stuff here, very good quality like i said guys everything's 3d printed to make uh, to you know manufacture to fit this case and when you when you take that extra effort like paul does to do this you can see why you know, they just last and they just work so um we'll give it a good rundown on maybe a little cheek inverter or something we'll pull out there we'll see what we can get at the run so we'll put it back together for this test that way it's um, as it would be if you guys were to, were to grab one yourselves. And like I said, guys, we don't, we don't sell them direct to the public. Just hit up Paul and I'll put some links in the description here if you wanna, you wanna grab some. Uh, but the case size, they're not, they're not overly big either, guys. So yeah, we'll grab a tape measure and we'll see what she's at. 170, so 170 wide, 325 long. So this will fit in your little chassis mounted boxes on the side of your caravan. And um, height, I'll just get a quick height of it to the terminal height. About 230 to the top of the bolt there. All right. So if you've got that clearance, which this is comparable to most of your 120 amp hour, you know, AGM batteries that, are, that you've got in your chassis mount on your caravan. So it's a perfect addition. Even your plastic, um, you know, battery boxes drop straight in. In actual fact, let's try that. You're all probably familiar with these. If you've got these in your caravan, Jayco's have got them. A lot of other manufacturers use them. You know, with your lid. Here with the plastic. The lid with your little strap that goes around it. Let's see how it drops into this. I should better not pull that until I put the screws on. Let's put the screws on first. Let's see if she fits. Oh, perfectly. Look at that. <laughs> Bloody beautiful. Straight on. 
Look at that. That's 190, 190 amp hours, guys, in the 120 amp hour plastic battery boxes. So if you get a caravan with two chassis mounted you know, trays on your side of your van, you put two of these in there, you're getting close to 400 amp hours without modifying anything. You, know, you can pretty much drop them straight in. How good's that? So just remember this has that Dali 250 amp continuous discharge BMS. So you can run a 3000 watt inverter straight from this battery. So cool. Put this on for a bit. This is my good little test rocket, this thing. This thing's my little heater. And this thing will pull, you know, a couple of, couple of thousand, 2,100, 2,400 watts. We'll get this running and we'll see what she's drawing and see what she's using. This is the Kotec converter. I um, actually bought off a customer because we pulled it out of their fan. It just reminded me to check this out. So when we pulled it out, look at the gauge of cable it was on. I don't know if you can see it, but that's twin core 8 BNS. <laughs> twin core 8 BNS on a 2000 watt inverter. And I remember that was like some four or five meters away. So I haven't taken out the terminal since we pulled this out of their van and you know, I bought it off them. So obviously I'm not going to use that gauge of cable. I think we might put some, uh, I don't know, what's that, some 70 mil? That'll do it. Cool. We change out this um, inner drive breaker from a 120. We'll swap it out for something a bit heavier. Cover. All right. Give that a negative as well. So he used the 25 mil lug with that inside of it. Crazy, isn't it? That's the, it's the stuff we deal with. In we go. Okay, that's the Kotec remote. See if this controls it. Oh, look at that. It's on. That's good to know, this one runs on it. And obviously you can see your, your battery voltage was the indicator there and the, the output and percentage. Good to know, let's try the red arc one. Yes, it's turned off. And look at that, on. So that's the red arc remote, guys. So yeah, just so you know, the, the Kotex red arcs are the same inverter, essentially. Um, it's well documented, you can look it up. Either way, it's not what this video is about. Turn that off. Off that goes. We'll put that other one because it's got a nice little display. We'll keep that going there so you can see it. We'll put this on heat. There we go. There's 60% of the inverter's output. Oh yeah, she's blowing hot air. Turn that around. That's ramped up. And let's get the Dali out. 543. Yeah, I got a few batteries here. 50543, that's the one there. Wait for it to add. Click it again. We're on. All right, there we go. So we're pulling 104 from this battery, and yeah, it was on just on 50%, just over 50% state of charge. Cool. So there's the load, 104, 104 amps. Remaining capacity is 95. So theoretically, just slightly less than an hour with this discharge, that battery will be done. You gotta remember though, it's 50%. 50% state of charge, guys. Look at this, like, with this load on it, it's holding that voltage. That's, that's lithium. How good's that? So even if you had this set up in like a, you know, the back of a canopy or something like that, you know, you run your induction cooker, you've got a very small battery here. Very tiny, very tiny footprint in the draw system of your car or, you know, even in your van, you have a couple of them. Beautiful. And that can discharge up to 250 amps. So in other words, the weakest link in this system here is the inverter. Nice and warm from that blow heater there.
We're reaching the end of the battery capacity here. We're still running. Still running here. Beautiful. Now that battery was only at 50% state of charge. And we've still got normal. So still reading normal at the inverter level. And that's why lithium is so good. It'll still, you know, the voltage operation, operational range of these is uh, pretty good as with most inverters and the old low voltage will sort of only happen towards the last few percent of the lithium as you can see the state of charge on the lithium here is just over 10 percent 11.9 to be exact we're still pulling that 105 106 amps at the moment there's 22 amp hours remaining in capacity according to the daily in this little cup scout and its display is so it's showing a quarter. Yeah, one little light. There we go. We'll keep this running. Now we're still going here. Voltage 11.6, remaining 5, 5.1, 4.9 amp hours remaining. It's not much energy left in this little battery here, but we're still running. So yeah, you can see the load there, 113 amps. As the voltage drops, you notice the amperage has climbed. And there's your voltage per cell. For you tech guys that want to get into the cell voltages. And the difference is pretty good. So that's that balance of doing its job. Not now, obviously, that's the top balancing from it. But that's a testament to Paul's build quality. He balances these cells really well. Should be getting right close now to the end of the... Uh, to a fully discharged battery. 1.8%, still running. That's the Cub Scout, guys. 2001 inverter. running that heater so we don't even have a low voltage alarm yet and that's because of the lithium you know, it's generally around this voltage and thereabouts there's not really much left in it as you can see so it, it gets nowhere near you know, your shut off voltages on pretty much any standard inverter out there you can check out your, your voltage range, you're about nine and a half, maybe 10 volts. Um, usually it's like a low voltage cutoff, might be 10 if they're not programmable. Here we go, we're still running this. 0.6 of a percent, so there's only 0.9 amp hours remaining. Let's see how far we can take this. 0.2. Zero percent, still running. A little bit left in the bank. How much? There we go, state of charge, low level of alarm has come on now in the Dali. 31 degrees temperature inside there. And there's your cell voltages. We're still pulling 1300 odd watts from it. 120 amps now, still coming from it. No low voltage alarm on this yet. It's, it's just indicating low. Let's get it to the point of turning off. Just run out of um, <laughs> run out of SD storage and that, so I just flip over to my phone. So still going. absolutely nothing left in this battery but we're still running we'll take it down as far as we can go Whoop. cool all right we are beeping there we go 
under voltage protection has been hit and we are shut down. I'm gonna keep it on, I'm not gonna to touch it. I'm just gonna see what it does here. So that's still on, I haven't touched that. I've just got the alarm. Now I don't think there's gonna be any recovery because this is fully depleted. Look at that. I think we're gonna stay off. So if we turn it off, we turn it back on. No way. Surely not. Oh, that turned on. <laughs> Go the power pull cup scout. How good's that? That turned back on. That's not gonna last for long, but hey, there it is. So after it's hit the, the alarm, turn it off to reset, we're on again. Aha, there we go again. There we go. Hey, that was, that's a good 45 seconds then. Not bad. There we have it, the Cub Scout. That was from a 50% state of charge. And it's run it for uh, just over an hour, hour and a half. It's pretty, pretty damn good if you ask me. That's only a single 190 amp hour lithium battery. Pretty cool, I'm happy with that guys. Hope that's a good rundown for you guys. You've seen inside of it, you see what it can do. I'm gonna charge this battery up now and let it sit on about 70 or 80%. Let it go and yeah, check out the links if you wanna purchase one of these. We don't sell them direct. We just, we like using Pulse batteries generally because of their, their high discharge and their build quality. And you're able to see what they can and can't do in the real world before you purchase and before you buy it. So yeah, guys, enjoy.